So, Julian, how are you? I'm good. Uh, busy ADE schedule. Uh, really busy days and um, long nights, but it's uh, amazing so far. Um, I can't really explain. It's amazing to be at all these parties. Uh, of, of, sorry, all these parties, seeing amazing artists, artists everywhere. So, is uh, an event like this where well, it's one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, EDM festival. In the, is it inspiring to see all your or your uh, colleagues and your your friends? Well, it's, it's it's really inspiring for me because it's like a really such a it's such a small country and mm -hmm. um, people from all over the world come to this small place Amsterdam just for the EDM scene right now and it's crazy to think that people like from China from the US come here because mm -hmm. it's booming and it's 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 crazy to think that our small country is such a big uh, influence in in the whole EDM world so. Um, for me, it's really inspiring to see all these DJs from all over the world and uh, to, to uh, see them getting inspired also because uh, they can show their music to other artists and everyone's just on the streets. It's, it's mm -hmm. unbelievable. You can spot all your favorite DJs on the streets. It's, it's amazing and it's for everyone inspiring, I think. And then do you talk uh, with these people about music as well to kind of exchange ideas or something? Yeah, absolutely. I, um, just when I went here, I uh, saw some guys on the street, they, they were running uh, at me. They were saying, yo, check out my, my promo. Okay. And um, yeah, they just had, the had their headphones with them, with them and they, they showed me their music. It was really good. So I was like, okay, this, you should send me this, man. It's, uh, it's really good. And that's what I like about it, you know, you can, see, you, you can show your music on the streets mm -hmm. to your favorite artists and yeah, it's not possible in the club because it's, there's like a gap between the artists mm -hmm. and, and the audience and especially with, also with, with festivals, the gap is even bigger. So I like uh, the whole idea of uh, this ADE thing where everyone's on the street. Mm -hmm. Because, like you said, it is quite interesting, as a DJ, you're behind the booth, you're, you're, uh, you're kind of in charge of the crowd. Yeah. Uh, how often are you in the crowd? Do you, do you get the chance to go to shows and, and see other people perform or is it really behind the deck now? Sometimes when I have like time extra and I, I have some time off, I would like to see, uh, I sometimes like to see other artists, okay. like something different. I know I, I, I had this festival called Siget. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to play there and it was awesome. Like the, the, the crowd was really open-minded and mm -hmm. everyone loved it. And uh, everything I played, I played like hip hop tracks and they okay. loved it. And I was like, I'm gonna watch every artist on here. So I watched Ellie Golding on the main okay. stage. That was really sick. I love her voice. And uh, yeah, I watched uh, some techno DJs also. Okay. It's crazy to see all these different uh, music styles on one festival. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like about, um, yeah, about the whole music industry right now. And is that important then for you as a DJ as well to, uh to have, be eclectic and to have, to have uh, all these different styles? Yeah, for me it's really important because I get inspired by, by, by different styles of music every day. Mm -hmm. I listen to a lot of different kinds of music and different uh, styles of, 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 I don't know, rhythm, everything. Mm -hmm. I, I get inspired by it because it's creative thinking. Like mm -hmm. an artist has like no rules. You can like produce whatever you want. There's no boundaries. and. Um, I think it's, especially in the EDM scene, it's, it's important to, to think out of the box and to have no boundaries. And that's what I think is really important for, for an artist to have like the whole freedom of creativity and just do what you want. And yeah, it's really important for me. What is something that uh, inspired you? So maybe a song or, 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 or an artist that people wouldn't expect from you? Um, yes. Um, I get inspired by um, ASAP Rocky, it's a rapper. Okay, sure. It's yeah. like one of my favorite rappers right now. His, uh, his beats are massive mm -hmm. and his flow is really good, like the rhythms and the, the flow switches. And I get inspired by his music just because of it's like some, sometimes it's like really dark, but sometimes it's like really powerful. And I get inspired by it because it has so many different things you can, you can, you can, you can, you can I don't know, spot a lot of different sounds and noises in a track and that's what I really like about, about ASAP and you have a lot of other artists too that are like really into the, um, 
the smaller details in, in the mm. track. And you, I can hear that and I, I love it. I, I want to do that in my own productions too. So that's what inspires me to do, uh, to do the same. You mentioned uh, playing some hip-hop tracks at Seagat as well, and, and then ASAP Rocky. Can you see yourself moving towards, uh, not, not necessarily forever, but see yourself doing more hip-hop productions? Um, well, I actually started as an as a beat producer, so I, w I produced for rappers at okay. the first at the first place. But I found my love for electronic music, like like the EDM mm. and melodic stuff, because I love to make melodies and. I get inspired by a lot of things and I just think in melodies, so I have to say, uh, I don't know, I, I have a big love for hip-hop also and mm -hmm. I, I play it a lot and uh, I listen to it a lot, but I don't know if I'm like moving to hip-hop more okay. because it's maybe, maybe in the future when I'm mm -hmm. like having a different mind setting, but for now I'm just like good with, with what I do, I love what I do, I love the whole melodic thing and I love mm -hmm. to make powerful tracks, so uh, I'll just keep continuing with that. And uh, well, you've been, you started at, a, at quite a young age, so, so you've been doing this now for a while. Have you, what are kind of the, the things a track must have for you? Have you learned any tricks kind of, kind of or? Like in my own productions? Yeah, or, that yeah. Are, or sounds that you, that you like or th think, what, what makes a good song for you? For me, it's, um, I love it when like a melody is like unexpected. I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but like sometimes mm -hmm. you have like these chords that are like so sick, and you have like not the st not the standard like the regular kind of mm -hmm. chords, but it's like something different, and I like that. I like to have uh, uh, different different styles of of music combined in one track. That's what I really like when someone's um, being creative with with different kinds of styles in music, and that's what I really like. And that's what I'm always looking for in my own productions also, to just do something different and do something new. And especially, I love, I love melodies. I love to make like really unexpected melodies that people are like, holy shit, this is possible too. So I don't know, I, I uh, think it's for me, it's really important to hear that there's like feeling in a track and that a person really uh, is like 100% behind his own production. That's what I mean. Can you give me an example of, of a song you made recently where you, where you kind of felt you, you nailed it in a way? Yeah, well, um, I really am happy about my last track called Last okay. Words. I try to just think of like no boundaries and just like mm -hmm. do what I want. And let's start something not thinking about how the crowd's going to react, mm -hmm. not think about how the DJs are going to react. Just think about like what you like, and that's what I tried. I, I didn't make like an intro to mm -hmm. um, mix it in for DJs. It, it was it, it's not a track easy to mix in, you know. Sure. And I don't know. It's just like a song. It's like from the beginning to the end. It's like worth listening. Mm -hmm. If you look at like like tracks I made or other DJs made like original mixes, like mm -hmm. you see a lot of people like skipping the intro. Like at the break, the song is start. The song starts. And I try to make a track that's like um, that's good, that's nice to listen to from the from the beginning to the end, and that's what I tried with Last Words, and that's why I'm really proud of that one. And um, well, you say you 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 wanted to have no boundaries and didn't want to think about what what other people would think yeah. of the song. Is that difficult to do because the there are so many DJs coming up and and, and everything is moving quite quickly? Is it is it difficult to to Kind of not care of, uh, about what, what people it is. Think. It's it's strange that I have to mention that I that I don't care, but um, I I don't know. You have a lot of. I was like in a producer's class before uh, I I went mm -hmm. to school for music production, and uh, a lot of people were saying saying like, yeah, it has to be 128 and it, a BPM, and it mm -hmm. it has to have an intro from like 30 seconds and an outro, and I'm like, it it. It doesn't, you know, you can do what you want. It's music, there's no rules. And it's really hard because DJs, they create something that, um, that it has to be 128 because otherwise they were like, they will be like, oh, this one is 132. Maybe it's too, too slow when I pitch it down. I'm like, it's, it's hard because the whole thing, mm -hmm. or the whole rules, they, they got created. They're not there for real, so right. I don't know. It's it's uh, it is there, but yeah, it's it's hard to say that that it's. 
I, I, I think about it too when I make a track. I'm, I'm thinking like 120 is a good one, 126. I'm, I'm like, okay, this is a track the DJ's gonna support. Okay, I need a longer intro. Mm -hmm. It's something I think about, but sometimes it's good to just have no boundaries and just mm -hmm. do what you want. So, uh, well, you mentioned, uh, sorry, uh, last words. So, what are you working on now? Is it again something you feel like you complete creative freedom? Yeah, actually, I'm I'm just doing um, some like vocal tracks okay. with with uh, with some songwriters, and they're just like more more like songs. Why why uh, work with songwriters? Why why go that di direction? Um, I feel I felt like my melodies they needed some like. Uh, artist mm. on it like a song a singer or or uh, um, someone with a great voice so I, I thought about what's good better than creating a different atmosphere on a track that already has a great melody mm. so I tried to um, send it to a lot of songwriters like new tracks new upcoming tracks and people were like really uh, really happy with my tracks and they were, I, I've got like a lot of tracks right now with, with vocals and I love the way you can uh, have people sing along with your track, tracks and you create a, so much uh, with vocal tracks you, you have a bigger audience like mm -hmm. a lot of more people are listening to it because they can sing along and sure. uh, that's what I uh, want to reach like more people with my music. And then can you give me maybe a title of a song that you're working on now or is it yeah, it's like uh, I've got a track called Every Day, okay. but it's it's like not final yet. Okay. I've got a track called This Time, but it's like we're still working on it. Okay. So it's just work in progress. Maybe it's another another title in in, Fair the, enough. Fair in, enough. Uh, in the future. But. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for the Thank interview. You. Thank you.